have your seats. Pastor David is coming. God bless you all. Good morning. So wonderful to see each and every one of your smiling masks. We're going to either all have to start wearing shields or we're going to get those masks with the little holes in them so we can, we can see your smiling faces. But I see your eyes are bright as we celebrate the resurrection of our King. Amen. What an amazing day it is for us today. Is it all right to celebrate? Yeah. Well, somebody told me he has risen. Somebody, nah, that, somebody told me he got up. Somebody told me that our Lord is alive. And that's all we got for him? Hallelujah. As we walked away at the final four last night, we got the seventh and a half court shot to sit. But none of that can save us. None of that can heal us. None of that can set us free. But the blood shed so long ago on a hill called Calvary. Good God from Zion. I better stop. I get into the message right now. Come on, Pastor David. God bless you. Oh, it's so good to be. We were, a year ago in March, we were talking, is this thing going to be over so we can maybe celebrate Easter together? And it wasn't. We had to wait a whole year. But we're here. And we're alive. And we're grateful for it. And we're different. A lot has happened this year. A lot of changes have been made. But I, I'm just so thankful to be here today, and I just want to point out that in this room, there's a whole lot of people who are less than 10 years old, and a bunch of teenagers, and some 20s, and 30s. Maybe you're celebrating one of your anniversaries of your 30th birthday. Yeah, 39. An anniversary. 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, and we've even got some 90 year olds here, right? All right. And we're so thankful you're all here today. Now, a lot has changed over this last year. A little over a year ago, we were deciding on our new name, Life Connection Church. Yes. So I want to welcome you all to Life Connection Church. Some first time some of you have been here with us uh, under that name. And we're looking forward to doing some things like uh, developing an app for our church. Uh, changing our web pages, getting an electronic sign. We need some people who really have talent in the art and design area who can, who are willing to spend some time working on some of these things that we're going to be putting together as we kind of reformat ourselves in this community. And so, at the end of the service, I'm going to ask you to get a hold of me and get your name down so we can arrange a time when we can meet because there's a lot of stuff going in. Our new pastor, Pastor Stewart, has a lot of great ideas and we want to be able to help him get these implemented as soon as possible because God's got some great things for us and it's just wonderful to be able to step forward in faith knowing that God's already prepared the way. And so I just want to invite those of you with talent in those areas to see me after the service so that you can be included and we can work together to make a real great change here. Uh, yes, uh, Al has something to share with us. Brother Al.
Praise the Lord. He's risen. Right. So just a short story. Uh, the 10th, the Saturday, the 17th to Saturday, work day, 8 to noon, lunch provided. Saturday the 10th and the 17th, work days. And thank you all who showed up for the work day a, a week ago Saturday to get this set up for us. Very nice, very much appreciated. Look forward to those of you who can show up for the work day the next two Saturdays, right? That's right, next two Saturdays. Very good. Any other announcements? Any words, now, Free Methodist Church, we believe in the freedom of the spirit in worship. And there might be somebody here who just has a burning word of testimony or encouragement that they just got to share. Anybody in that category? Dorothy, let's hear a word of praise. In the life of our church, we have a, a great day here today. And we have a couple of babies that their parents are bringing for baptism. And I'd just like for their parents to bring the babies up with them at this time. And we're going to have a baptism service. Amen. In the days of the new covenant, Christ Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. And on the day of Pentecost, the apostle Peter declared regarding the salvation given through Christ, the promise is to you and to your children. It is therefore our privilege to present our children to the Lord and our duty to raise them in his ways. These parents now bring these children to offer them in dedication and to pledge in the presence of this congregation to bring them up in the Lord's discipline and instruction. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who has made saving covenant with your people and who, out of your loving kindness, has ordained that they should live before you in family, we thank you that it is our privilege to dedicate our children to you in steadfast hope that they will cleave to your covenant and live to your glory. We entreat you for these children that they may be delivered from the power of sin and Satan and be set apart to you by the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray for these parents that they may be given divine aid so that both by instruction and example they may lead these children in the way of everlasting life, and so all may come in unity together to your eternal kingdom. We pray for this congregation that we may faithfully discharge our duties to both parents and children.
through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now I have questions for our parents here. Do you, in the presence of God in this church, solemnly dedicate these children to the Lord? Do you, so far as you are able, on his or her behalf, renounce the devil and his works, the lure of the world and the sinful desires of fallen humanity, so that in the training of this child you will not be led by them, and so that so far as you are able, you will keep this child from following them. Will you faithfully strive by word and example to lead these children to personal faith in Christ? Do you accept the authority of the Old and New Testaments? Out of them will you diligently teach this child the commands, commandments and promises of the Most High God raising him or her in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Let us acknowledge our duty to strengthen this family with prayers and encouragement, thus aiding the parents and children to fulfill all that has here been promised. The congregation will affirm this by standing.
We have four generations of embryos here. My father's able to see his great grandson uh, baptized this morning. That's just wonderful. Okay, at this time, we're going to have our Pastor Sabino Franco come forward and bring us special music. God bless everyone, and welcome to this beautiful party. And I say it's a party because the Christianity around the world, we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. He's alive. Yeah. He's alive. <laughs> Yesterday I was here, Pastor Stuart asked me if I want to say something in Spanish. And I say no, but, but I have to, Pastor Stuart. <laughs> I don't wait that so long. It's maybe an hour and a half or two hours for me for my little sermon. <laughs> oh, siempre tenemos algo que decir en español y en inglés también acerca de este día tan especial porque un día como hoy Cristo Jesús se levantó de la tumba venció la muerte con poder y esto es hermanos la piedra de tropiezo es la base de nuestra creencia es lo que a nosotros nos hace ser diferentes a las demás denominaciones. Porque los dioses de las demás religiones están en una tumba. La tumba de nuestro Salvador y Dios está vacía. La grave is empty, hermanos. Nuestro Señor vive y reina para siempre. Eh, hay mucho que predicar, hay mucho que decir acerca de esto. Pero quiero compartir ahora un canto con ustedes. I want to sing a song. This is a beautiful song and I hope so you can see the, the letters behind me. Uh, because uh, say something about that Jesus is Lord. So when you can feel the, uh, the Holy Spirit, use your hands, stand up, raise your hands, or I don't know. But let them let the know knows that you are so happy for what He did for you and for me. God bless you and enjoy this song. Oh, thank you. Lord. Oh, 
time for competition. And so we can get fired up for those things. We have to be able to get fired up for Christ. Amen. Whether he, uh, Pastor David said we're 10 years old, we're 20 years old. Some of us are in our 30s. <laughs> 70s and 80s, you got to get fired up behind what God has done for us. But but I would be remiss. I'm, I'm so blessed today to have so many amazing friends and their family, and I'm sure many of you do as well, but praise God, I got the microphone. First of all, I, I don't like putting people on the spot. I've been a visitor in church many times and I don't like when people tell me to stand up and all of that, but this, this is just special. Today is special. And this sister came in the office, myself and JC and Brother Lamont were in there. And the sister knocked on the door. The sister moaned me, just wave your hand. You don't even have to get up. About 34, 35 years ago, her husband and I began in the police academy together. I'm gonna get a little choked up because I say she just messed me up today coming to church. He since passed and he was a series officer after he left the department we worked at together. He came down here and we were so upset that that he left the Bay Area and came here to Modesto and moved his family. And now his son is a Modesto sergeant and her grandson is in the police academy and they just have this legacy just, just going on. And we were there with them, my wife and myself, when he breathed his last. And I miss him so much just every day. And now I'm here in Modesto with you, with all these tremendous people and just to put our arms around you and just continue to keep you encouraged and strengthened. I remember as we were there holding his hand and watching that ventilator. And man, I just never forget the days and the times that we all had together. So God bless you. Thank you for coming. So y'all remember that name, Sister Momi, and continue to keep her in your prayers. And I know it's not going to be the last time that we see her here. Bringing y'all all kind of credentials, folks. 
His wonderful wife is sitting there, right there, Sister Mona, just wave your hand. God bless her. I met this brother in Folsom Prison. And you holding it up. He wasn't incarcerated, y'all. I see, I see chairs scooting all over. I see chairs scooting back. He wasn't incarcerated. We were both ministering there. I came over to the A Chapel to to prepare for, for Sunday worship. And brother was setting up his keyboard and I was like, what's going on over here? I'm supposed to be here. And just hearing him warm up, I told the chaplain, I'll go over to another one, but I'll be right back. And I went over to another part of the prison and I preached the message so fast, y'all gonna wish I preached it like that today. <laughs> Because I had to get back and be in worship with this brother. And we've been, well, the term is thick as thieves <laughs> ever since that time. And I just love him and we're praying that he's here with us. We couldn't get him up to Sacramento, so God brought me to Modesto. <laughs> so y'all continue to pray for them that. Every move they try to make out of the region, God blocks it. <laughs> so God bless him. And then, of course, y'all know my road dogs and are with me here. It's actually Brother JC's birthday today, so come on and clap. <laughs> I just want him to stand, introduce his beloved mother is with him and me and this sister. Boy, we done put some miles. <laughs> we done put some miles in together over 30 years. So uh, if you just want to introduce your mom, I'm uh, thankful for her. Praise the Lord, everybody. Uh, thank you for the birthday wishes. I just want to introduce you to my, my queen. Uh, she has been a very instrumental in the man who I have become today. Hopefully, we will get to see her more. My mother is Ivory Butler. Amen. Just tremendous. She's been like a mother to me as well. So God bless you. Thank you so very much. This is so special when people come out to support you. It's amazing. Sometimes you don't know the impact that you make in people's lives until they make sacrifices for you. It just shows what kind of people they are. Amen. And Minister Lamont Campbell, he's here with me today as well. Want him to stand and introduce his wonderful family. They're all here today. Want everybody to see you again. Be able 
to be here with you each and every time and we can't wait to be next door. And then last but never of not least, y'all saw my wife up there singing this morning. Praise the Lord for her. But you never met her before. Uh, uh, you, you met her before, but y'all never met our son Terrence. So Terrence, wave your hand. He just had a birthday, 16 years old. So we thank the Lord because he's accustomed to staying up till 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. When I'm getting up for 5 a.m. prayer, that brother's up. And we knew we were leaving out early today, so we didn't even have an expectation that he was going to be with us. And he came down last night, we were in the kitchen together, and he said, what time are we leaving for Modesto? And I'm telling you, I, I told my wife, I said, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed that he wanted to get up. He's so gifted and he's so talented. And he's really a special young man. And Terrence, it really means a lot that you got up and came with us today. It really does. Because we ain't right next door. We can't drag him across the parking lot. <laughs> But he came of his own volition, and that really, really means a lot. Amen. Now, as, as, as I gather myself, Brother, Brother Trino's going to give me a little bit of time to get myself together here. Because, boy, I, I probably wouldn't even make it through page one of my notes without the tears flowing. So he's going to minister in song, and then I'll be back with this message. God bless you all. Thank you all so much.
I know we're not in the sanctuary and we usually have the moment of prayer before and just really feel led that we would take this moment, ask Pastor Sabino to come, Pastor David, please come. Minister Lamont, JC, let's come. We want to have a word of prayer. I want to pray for Brother Trino. I want to pray for any of you, right, where you're standing. We don't have the altar to come up here and kneel today, but right where you're standing, whatever it is, I believe that God is going to meet our needs today and he's going to do something so supernatural he's just about to blow our minds amen so if you would just just bow there pastor sabino if you could come and pray a prayer in spanish and then brother lamont if you could come and pray for the people and trino and we'll be praying for Querido Señor, bendecimos tu nombre en este día. Te damos las gracias, Señor, por la vida y por el cuidado que has tenido para con nosotros hasta hoy. Gracias, Señor, por tu manifestación de amor que diste a la humanidad al morir por nosotros en una cruz. No fueron los clavos lo que te detuvo en, en esa cruz, Señor, sino fue tu amor. Gracias que tomaste nuestro lugar. Gracias por haber muerto en la cruz. Pero sobre todo, Señor, gracias por haber resucitado. Porque tu victoria es nuestra victoria. Porque tu triunfo es nuestro triunfo, Señor, sobre cualquier cosa negativa que venga a nuestra vida. En esta hora, Señor, como siervos tuyos, pedimos por tu iglesia. Tú conoces la necesidad de cada uno de nosotros, querido Dios. Y en este mundo, Señor, en los tiempos que estamos viviendo tan llenos de problemas, de luchas personales, familiares, te queremos pedir, Espíritu Santo, que estés con nosotros. No nos dejes alejarnos de ti. No permitas que nada ni nadie, Señor, nos aleje de tu presencia. Danos humildad, danos sencillez. Danos de tu Espíritu Santo, Señor. Gracias, Padre, porque yo sé que tú tienes algo especial para esta iglesia. Tanto en inglés, Señor, como en español. Yo sé que tú tienes algo, Dios. Y yo quiero estar aquí para ser parte de esa bendición. Permite que en todos nosotros, Señor, haya ese deseo ardiente de estar juntos más que nunca. Y luchar, Señor, en medio de las diferencias. Seguirte a ti por sobre todas las cosas. Bendice a tu pueblo que el día de hoy, Señor, celebra tu resurrección. Y no permitas, Dios, que el enemigo quite de nuestras vidas lo que tú has puesto con tanto amor. Haz esa obra en nosotros. Y en medio de estos tiempos difíciles, danos un espíritu de perseverancia de amor de los unos para con nosotros y bendice Señor esta iglesia inglés y español o cualquier otro idioma Señor todos aquellos Señor que aman tu segunda venida todos aquellos Señor que creen en tu resurrección creemos también que viviremos por siempre bendice a tu pueblo y gracias por tu presencia con nosotros Oramos en el nombre del que vive por los siglos. Amén. Father, we thank you. We are precious Holy Spirit. I feel you in here today. I feel your presence, Lord. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to remember this prayer today. That this church, life connection, Lord, will be known as Life Connection yes. Memorial Hospital yes, where you come in one way yes. but you leave another way. Yes. You come in touched by God, loved by God, yes. lifted up by God. Yes. You will not leave here the same way you came. You will not leave here the same way you came. You will not leave here the same way you came. Yes. This is a place of refuge, a place of hope, a place of safety, a place of love, a place of joy, a place of peace, a place to come
know today is well, yes, Lord. Yes. The man that you have touched yes. a long time ago. The man you anointed a long time ago. Lord, remember the gifts and the talent and the anointing you've given him, Lord. That you may use them in this time and this season to do great wonders and great work with this church, Lord. With this ministry, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Because many times, you know, when, 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 when we're in church, we imagine that everybody is usually where we are. And we think that everybody knows the resurrection story just like we do. Some of us, you know, we're blessed to be able to come up in church. I've never known a time in my life where I wasn't in church. 
Now, I spent some time out there in the wilderness, but I was still attached to the church. I still had areas in my life that I wasn't delivered from, but I was still going to church. So I know the story. But sometimes we think the person next to us or behind us, they should know the story just like we do. So bear with me as we read through the scripture so we can all be acquainted with Jesus' story. Amen. Amen. Matthew, the 27th chapter. And we're going to start there in verse number 38. And we're going to read through all of that. I know sometimes we're not accustomed to reading that much scripture, but... We're in church. Is that okay? Is it all right if we read our Bible? Young man, is it, is it okay? All right, I got the thumbs up. Praise God. <laughs> so we're going to read from Matthew, the 27th chapter. And we're going to read all the way from 38 to 66. And then we're going to read the first 10 verses of Matthew, chapter 28. Say, man, if you are there, say, hold on. If you're still looking, it's all right. One time when I was working, see, it's okay if you don't know your Bible that well. I was on the department five, six, seven years. Came across a group of bandits doing some things that I didn't know what the law was, but I knew it looked like they was breaking the law. So I proceeded to apprehend about four or five of them. JC knows well. Took them down to the station. They said, what are you arresting us for? I said, I don't know yet. <laughs> I'm telling you, so you, you can begin to reference your Bible. So when I got to the station, I, I began to ask other people, hey, is, is there a law against this? Started calling around to other departments, people I knew. Hey, is you ever heard of this law? And they said, man, look here, look there, look. So I began to look all through the penal code and the business and profession code and all of this until I found the statute that meant the crime. Just telling y'all, even on a department as a veteran, I didn't know all the penal code. So you may not know all the Bible. And that's all right. You'll get to learn it. Amen? <laughs> So Matthew 27, 38 through 66, it says, Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed by derided him, shaking their heads, and saying, You who would destroy the temple and build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priest also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. He trusts in God, let God deliver him now, if he wants to, for he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling for Elijah. At once, one of them ran and got a sponge, filled it with sour wine, put it on a stick, and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks were split, the tombs also were open, and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. 
After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly, this man was God's son. Verse 55 says, many women were also there looking on from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate, asked for the body of Jesus, then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and laid it in his own tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the chief priest and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command the tomb to be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. Pilate said to them, you have a guard of soldiers. Go, make it as secure as you can. So they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Chapter 28, verse 1 says, after the Sabbath, as the first day of the week was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And suddenly there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descending from heaven came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. For fear of him, the guards shook and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he has been raised as he said. Come see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples. He has been raised from the dead and indeed he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. This is my message for you. So they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy, and they ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came to him, took hold of his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. God bless you. Lord, we just thank you. Praise you and how we magnify and lift you on this, the Resurrection Sunday. How we glorify you, God, in everything that we do and in everything we say. God, it is my prayer now that I would decrease so that you may increase. I pray, God, that it not be my opinion or what I feel or what I think, God, but it would be you. And I pray that your word would penetrate to the depth of every heart, God, I pray that every ear would be open, every eye, God, enlightened right now in the name of Jesus. Pray that no matter what their thoughts, no matter what their opinions, that the Holy Ghost would pervade right now in the name of Jesus. Let the heart and heart be turned to flesh, Father. Let the plug be removed from every ear. Let the troubled mind be stilled. In the marvelous name of Jesus, we pray. Thank God. Amen. And amen. God bless you all. Thank you. I don't know about you, but I, I really find that Holy Week or Passion Week can be really draining as we focus on the events that lead up to Jesus' death and the resurrection. We're supposed to be taking time to 
meditating, really consider and reflect on what Jesus did for us on this cross. But we also got life. We got work and we got kids and we got grandkids and we have other responsibilities and sometimes two or three days may go by and we may say, oh, I haven't even thought about Jesus this week. But God's love for us is so phenomenal that we can forget about him and he never forgets about us. I can put the mic down right there. I've been preaching that message all day. I'm so thankful to serve a God who doesn't respond to me the way that I respond to him. I'm so thankful to serve a God who will love me in spite of me. Good God from God. My wife knows a lot about me. Not too many things that I've hidden from her. That secret Swiss bank account. <laughs> How I wish. <laughs> but Jesus knows everything about me. He knows my hang-ups. He knows what challenges me. He knows the trouble that I have. And he still loves me. I try to treat my wife the best I can. But sometimes I fall short. And so we may go a day or two or five <laughs> or six. <laughs> but God knows. And he promised he would never leave me. Nor forsake me. Aren't you glad that you serve a God like that? Doesn't respond to us how we respond to him. I know growing up, my mom would have the ham and oven right now. We'd go to Easter service and she'd be saying, how long Reverend Thurman going to be up? Because I got to get this ham out the oven. <laughs> we was kids, we running and playing, but we just want to go home and watch basketball or something like that. But Jesus was on the cross. Aren't you glad that he doesn't love us how we give to him? Glory to Adios, aren't you glad? Woo, that God just loves us in spite of us. My brother's here today and I want to share the sudden passing of my own father. And since that time, Easter, crucifixion, the resurrection, it holds a little bit of a different meaning to me now. You see, anyone can be sentimental about the nativity. Everybody's a Christian when it comes to Christmas. Ooh, but Easter? <laughs> that, that's our main event right here. If you don't believe in the resurrection, you're not a believer. It's really that simple. But when you try to put yourself in a place, so Mommy, thank you for helping me out today because you keep me in this emotional state. Super sensitive right now. That level of grief, that pit that I felt in the depths of my stomach as I fell to the floor, my son was with me at the time, curled up in a fetal position on the floor as my brother was in tears on the other end of the phone telling me that our dad had died. About a week or so later, we had flown out to New York and sitting there in that church with that weight of grief being so heavy, I had to step out of that memorial service gather myself before preaching my father's eulogy. I mean, I had experienced death before. Extended family members, close friends like John. I had 
had that before. I mean, police officers, firefighters, neighbors, and friends. I, I've had that before. But never did I have such a feeling of irreversibility. I mean, death was and is permanent. Right? I have a sense of the disciples' pain. And when you take a moment to reflect on somebody that was so dear and close to you, you may just get a glimpse of what they were dealing with and what they were going through, that sense of pain and, and the loss in the midst of their life. And then we would say, sit in that for a moment. Sit right there. Feel that. And it gives you just a little bit of peek into what these people were going through at the very time in Jesus' day. But what if? Stay with me right here. What if? I mean, what if we walked outside that church? And there, to our utter amazement, Brother Lamont said it this morning when my brother walked up. He said, y'all even walk alike because my dad had this Fred Sanford type walk because he <laughs> had these hips replaced way back when they first started doing hip replacements and then a revision. So he would walk like this and had this big, full, gray beard and this smile on his face with this little white afro. <laughs> Alive again. What if? What if we seen him walking up to us as we walked out of that church? Alive. What if? It would give us the very idea that death could be reversed. I mean, could you imagine the joy? Every day I miss my father's voice. Could you imagine the joy? To see him walk up. What y'all doing here? Our scripture said the women had fear and great joy. You see, because fear is a reflexive human response. But it was overpowered by joy. Because Jesus was alive. Good God. That's where y'all can clap. like that. It gives me just a hint of what the disciples felt like on that very first Easter. They too had spent time grieving. And then here comes the news that Jesus has risen. Hallelujah. And off they go running. Running towards the hope of reversibility. Running towards the hope that death was not final. Running towards faith and hope that the irreversible will be reversed. For you, for me, every man and woman, boy and girl who places their faith, hope, and trust in the living Savior, Jesus, who is the Christ. Joy like we never could have imagined. It was this joy, excitement, and belief that caused the first Christians to stake everything on Jesus' resurrection. So much so that the Apostle Paul told the Corinthians, and if Christ has not been raised, our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. But let me ask you, what would you stake everything on? What is it you would be willing to die for? Jesus. Woo, glory. Say that again. Woo, glory. Say that again. It's an old church. Woo. About to be a cogent church, y'all. About to dance. We talk.
talked a little bit about it in Sunday school last week. What you were willing to die for and what death meant and what did failure mean and all these different things that we go through and the challenges in which we face. But did this really happen? Is the resurrection true? Yeah. Woo! Glory! <laughs> what we can be sure of is that something happened. The disciples experienced something. I mean, if Jesus had been just one more innocent victim, like Dr. King or Nelson Mandela, maybe Havel or Solzhenitsyn, he would have made his mark in history and then just faded away. No religion would have sprung up around him. No, it was the cross that redefined God as the one that would relinquish power for the sake of love. On this hill called Calvary, God renounced the one for the sake of the other. Just to bring us into relationship with him. Because the Apostle John wrote in 1 John 4, 15, God abides in those who confess that Jesus is the Son of God. And they abide in God. So we have known and believed the love that God has for us. For God is love, and those who abide in love abide in God, and God abides in them. Verse 17, very critical for us. Love has been perfected among us. Now, here we are, without excuse. We are called to love as the signifying marker that we are Christians. That we can proclaim boldly that we love Jesus Christ. No need to be ashamed. But the signifying marker is how we operate amongst each other. How we live with one another. It says, for how shall they know except they have love for the brethren? Until we can get to the point where we have love for each other. That overrides a master no mask. Good God for God. <laughs> Until we can have love for one another that overrides, are you a Democrat or a Republican? Amen. Love is the signifying marker whether I speak English or I speak Spanish. Love has to override all of that. Whether I'm black, whether I'm white, whether I'm brown. Sometimes we, we, we think we're loving each other. We're thinking that we have love because we're kind and we're nice. But love goes deeper than that. It's a river that runs deeper than that. It, the Bible says no greater love has any man except he who lays down his life for his brother. So that's your opinion. I have my opinion. But love causes me to lay mine down. Love causes me to lift you up and put myself down. Love calls me to serve you, no matter what it is or how you act. Love calls me to serve you. That's the signifying marker of a Christian. When we look at the first and the second century church, when we go back and we look at the men and women who went before us, they had love regardless, it says, people from many different nations. All they knew was that they just loved each other. They didn't care about your political position. They didn't care about your vaccination passport. They don't care about that. Love overrides all of that. That's what God is calling us to. The more excellent way. Give you a snapshot of the world's treatment of God's son. 
We see various classes of people I read through the scripture symbolizing the world, stand before Christ, their treatment of him, not just unbelievable to us, but horrific. Imagine it. The people of God's own world. His creation. Not just rejecting his son, but torturing and destroying him. Rulers passed judgment. Soldiers mocked and tortured him. Passerbys laughed and mocked at him. Religionists and government officials taunting him. And even the criminals on the cross mocking him. Yet the prophet Isaiah quotes, I gave my back to the smiters. For Jesus submitted to all this willingly. With all the horrible treatment that we have seen just in the past few weeks, no one volunteered, submitted to that willingly. Just a few days ago, we saw another Capitol police officer killed in the line of duty. Those of us who wore the badge, those of you who served in the military, those of you who've been protected by an officer, boy, you feel the pain. You don't need to know a man's name. I stood on the same line with him. He didn't do that willingly. If they would have told him before he went to work, you're going to die today, he would have called in sick. We see the rise in Asian hate. We watched on the TV the other day as a very large man kicked over an old Asian woman and then began to kick her on the sidewalk as the security guard in the store stood by, watched, and closed the door. If she would have got up that morning knowing God telling her in advance that you're going to be beaten today and possibly die, she wouldn't have went to the morning. But Jesus, he said, a body you have prepared for me. He knew it. He knew it was coming. He knew what was going to happen. He knew he would be tortured. The Bible tells us that he was mocked and more unrecognizable more than any man. And yet he said, send me. Y'all get a, get a picture of that. Sometimes we're celebrating a picture on a wall. Sometimes we're celebrating just an event. But get a picture. He said, I'll still go. And the Bible is clear. It says, for the joy that was set before him. That joy is he saw Stuart. That joy is he saw Sabino. And Raquel, that, that's the joy that he saw us. He saw Mike and Big John. He saw Al. He saw, he saw all of us being able to come into relationship with him. And he said, I'll come. But let's look at this. Sometimes it takes proof and it takes evidence. If you've ever heard of Pastor Lee Strobel, who's what we call one of the greatest apologists of our generation, has a book and now a movie out, The Proof of the Resurrection. But Brother Strobel was an atheist, his wife an agnostic, going through Yale Law School, his hero, Sir Lionel Rupko, the greatest defense attorney of all times. Still in the Guinness Book of World Records, won the most cases in a row. And Brother Strobel tells the story that his wife meets this nurse who's a Christian. And she befriends her and, and begins to bring her to church. And, and Lee says, I had to try to stop the cult from moving into my home. So he began to research the very cornerstone of what it is that we believe. And in two years, he himself surrendered his life to Christ. 
and has become one of the foremost proponents of the gospel of Jesus Christ that we've seen in the last 25 years. But I don't need the proof of a defense attorney because I got something a little better. I got prayer and meditation and time spent with God. So I have come to know him in such a way that he could not and would not allow death to win. And even when Jesus was risen from the dead, here he is on this road to Emmaus. When he runs into two disciples like you and like me. Because sometimes we go there. And Jesus says, where are you going? What's going on? And he begins to talk about himself. But the Bible says they don't know that it's Jesus. And they said, we would have thought. Y'all ever been there when you're going through hard times? You ever been there when you have one of them heart attacks? You ever been there when you got sickness in your body looking for a place to live? I'm, I'm sorry, but I've been there. We would have thought that God would have come to our rescue. We would have thought it. And so they invite Jesus to come and have some lunch with them. And the Bible says... That then Jesus does something that springs them into place. He breaks bread and gives thanks. And immediately their eyes are opened. And they know that it's Jesus. And as quick as they do that, Jesus is gone. So these brothers get up. They run to Jerusalem. Because they got to tell the disciples. They just had an encounter with Jesus. And while they're telling them. What happened. Jesus. Walks into the room. Now I'm going to finish with this. Because I, 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 this, this is why. The scripture just blows my mind. My wife and I. We go to the gym every day. Even though it's hard to. Keep this weight off of us. and it, Trust me, y'all, it's hard to look this good. <laughs> you like that one, so you use that, use that. Jesus comes back in his resurrected body, and he says, View the scars on my hands and my side and my feet. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was to pick a perfect body, I'd be wearing crop tops to church, y'all. <laughs> Showing my six pack. Preaching with my shirt on. <laughs> See what I'm talking about? Half, half sleeves on my shirt, arms bulging. If I was to pick the body that I wanted, it would be perfect shape. Teeth would be straight. Wouldn't even need no Colgate strips. None of that. I'd be looking good. Hair wavy. It's what we used to call good hair. But Jesus comes back with scars and marks on his body. And he says, touch them. Feel them. Now, I've told this story before. Our great-great-grandmother born on the Culpeper Plantation, Culpeper, Virginia. Both legs amputated, being in a wheelchair, family reunion. Feel these webs on my arms and on my backs, born into slavery. Those marks meant something to her. It left an impression on us. Those marks meant something to Jesus. It left such an impression on his disciples that were still preaching it 2,000 years later. <laughs> the church rises and falls on the testimony of those witnesses over 2,000 years ago. And we still stand in y'all. We, we still hear. We still preach it. We still proclaim it. We still magnify it. 
We still talking about he's alive. He is good. He's got it. We're still talking about the forgiveness. So even in the midst of situations and circumstances that don't come out right in our life. Because even after that meeting, the disciples still had bounties on their head. Even after that meeting, Rome was still oppressing them. Even after that, people were still trying to kill them. But underneath it all, there was a flow of joy that rose up and said, if God could do this, God from Zion. Woo. If God could do this, what, beloved, is too hard for God? Paul wrote to the church in Rome when he wrote Romans 8.32. He said, if God be for us, who can dare even stand against us? He said, for he who willingly, freely gave us his own son, what would he withhold from us? Saints of God, on this Resurrection Sunday, let us continue to celebrate the goodness of God. Let us continue to be faithful witnesses to the power of God in the lives of those around us and in the lives of those we come in contact with. Your situation does not have to change. To prove the reality of God. There was a little servant girl. In the house of Naomi. And yet. While she was serving them as a slave. She said. You a leper. But oh if you could get to the man of God. Now it would make sense. For Naomi to look at her and say. If your God was so great. You wouldn't be my slave. Same way people look at us. If your God was so great. I remember. I had a little car. With one of them little fish. Emblem on the back. And it said trust Jesus. And that little car broke down. And I was pushing that car out of the intersection. And some guys rolled up next to me. And laughing. And they said, why don't you trust God? And with tears in my eyes, I pushed that car off the freeway. And I said, God, I got to trust God on my car. And I'm pushing my car. And they laughed at me. That did not regulate God's power. He was still good. He was still all powerful. He was still in charge and in control. Because underneath there was a joy that said, if God could do this, what can he not do? Come on and clap your hands for Jesus. I thank God for you. I thank God for your time today. I thank, thank God for all of our friends and our family that came to be with us today. It's, man, it's, it's just so special uh, to welcome them in to be part of this tremendous family. I mean, I'm, I'm excited every day. There's very little that can, can even disrupt my joy knowing where God has us in this season of our lives. And happy to be here with you and happy to be part of this ministry. And as we continue to get to know you and you continue to get to know us. Uh, we look forward to building more and more upon those relationships. You'll find out the same way we are here is the same way we'll be when you see us out there, right next door. The same way, laughing and singing and praising God. Because God has been too good in the midst of all the pain, in the midst of all the loss. In the midst of all the struggle and the challenges, God is still on the throne. And he's still doing great things. Sometimes we just got to open up our eyes. I learned a pretty neat trick a while ago, and I shared this with my team. I said, every morning that you get up, 
Just try it. Take it for what it's worth. If you like it, put an extra in offering plate. If you don't, you don't worry about it. Every morning that I get up, I think about three things that I'm grateful for. And before I roll out of that bed, I say it out, out of my mouth out loud. And then I think about one person that I can share gratitude with. And then I text them. And if they text me back, it's an added bonus because it really begins to set my brain the right way that it needs to in the morning. If they don't, it doesn't matter because I've done my part. But you should try that sometimes. We'll give you a appreciation. We'll give you a gratefulness of people that surround you in the inner circles in your life. I did a funeral last Saturday to a family that's been fractured over time. And I sat there and I said, y'all haven't talked in years to one another. Because of what? Because of that, or that, or a dollar, or this, you let that break your family bond. Saints of God, when you leave out of here today, think about that. And then the Bible says, just be kind. Everybody's going through something. We all are dealing with something. Just be a little nicer. A little more loving. A little more grateful. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Pastor David, we're standing. Praise the Lord for you all. Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Stewart. God bless you. Um, uh, before we stand, we do have one more thing that we need to take care of, and that is Alan the ushers have offering plates. Whoa, yes, it's the second Easter that I forgot to take the offering at a normal time. But those of you who, uh, we thank you so much for your support of the church financially during this pandemic, finding other ways to than just passing the plate. But today we have ushers. I'm just going to ask them to stand at the door and receive your offerings as you leave. That would be okay. And now let's stand together for a benediction. Would you stand with me, please? Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and forever. Amen.